Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 37 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm actually going to show you how to do something pretty useful. What we're going to do is pull all kinds of information from a database and display it inside of a table. And then I'm going to show you how to come in here and, for example, add in one of the presidents that's missing from this. HI. If you can't see this, view it full screen. It's an HD video. You'll be able to see it wonderfully like that. And then just click Add President. And then just like that, you can now see that Barack Obama is right here. And I'm also going to show you how to come in here and remove different presidents from from the table as well. And all of the code, including how to load all of this database information and all the code, of course, is available underneath of this video. So let's get into the code. Well, I have a whole bunch of libraries that I've loaded in here. So since we're going to be working with Swing Interface, we have the border layout here. I'm gonna be changing fonts. I'm gonna be doing different things with events. I'm gonna, of course, be querying a database. I'm going to have simple date format. What this allows me to do is convert from strings to dates. And then down here, I have a whole bunch of different components that are gonna lie inside of my frame. Now, of course, anytime you're gonna be working with frames, you need to extend JFrame, just like I covered previously. And what we're gonna do is just start off real simple here. I'm gonna go static J. I need to create some labels. First name, last name, and then we're gonna have the state, and then we're gonna have the birth date. So those are gonna be all of my different labels that I'm gonna use inside of my GUI interface. And then I'm gonna have text fields that are gonna allow us to add additional presidents. And of course you could do this for any number of different other types of applications you might wanna build. And I'm just putting TF in here for text field. And of course, all of these things should be done in separate methods, but so that it's easier for you to follow along, I'm gonna do everything inside of the main method inside of Java. Eventually, we're gonna get into design patterns and you'll be able to use those as well. Then I'm gonna go Java Util. I'm gonna be working with a date. And yes, of course, you can type this out longhand. One of the reasons why I'm doing it is because I was asked if you could do it this way. SQL birth. And don't worry necessarily what all these mean. You'll get to it here eventually. Then since we're going to be using a J table, which is going to pull information from a database. We're going to create a object multi-dimensional array, and it's going to contain all of the information for each row of the database. And I'm going to call that database results. Give this a capital R so it's easier to read. And then I need to define all of the column names for this table as well. And I'm just going to call that columns. And how you add these defaults is right here with curly brackets. I'm going to go first name, last name, state, and birth date. And then close it off with curly brackets and a semicolon. So those are going to represent the column names inside of my table. And then what I need to do is I need to define static default table model. And this is the tool that I'm going to be using to load information into my J table. And if you don't remember, this is the J table here that contains all this database information. And then, of course, this is a J label down here. This is a J text field and all that. And then these are J buttons. So let's close that again. So we're going to be using this default table model to define the methods that the J table will use. And we're also going to be overriding one of these guys called get column class, just like I did actually in the previous tutorial. Sort of bringing a whole bunch of different tutorials together here and doing something useful. And then what you need to do is pass database results, which is all the information for each row in the database, as you see right here. And then also we need to pass columns, which is the name for all of the columns in our database. But since we're going to be overriding the method that I talked about previously, I'm not gonna put a semicolon there. Instead, I'm gonna put public class, and the guy that I want to overwrite is called get column class. And I'm doing this so that I'm going to be able to properly sort the dates because without this, Java considers everything to be a string. And we're going to go class return value. And all this does is whenever you pass in a column, it tells you what is the class of all the different things in that column. That's all. Not that complicated. And one thing we want to do here is we want to verify that the column actually exists. So if they pass in a negative column, well, that's not real. So we need to protect it against that. And we also are going to go and check that the column is not larger than the total number or the biggest column that's available for us to use. So that's all it's doing. And if everything's okay, we're just going to go get value at, we're going to go column, and we're going to call the method get class, which is going to get the class for said column that they passed over. And this is the column that I am talking about. Else, if they are calling for a column that doesn't exist, we're just going to go return value is equal to 
object class, and then outside of this, we're going to return return value. That's all that method does is it goes in there and makes sure that the proper class is passed. And that, like I said before, is so that I can properly sort this information and put a semicolon there after that guy. And now it's time to create my J table. I'm gonna go static J table. And I'm gonna call it table is equal to new J table. And like I said, default table model is going to be used to define what methods can be used. So I'm gonna pass that to it. Then any changes that I make to this default table model is automatically going to affect the J table. And now I'm gonna start playing around inside of main. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my J frame, which is going to be the window that pops up on the screen whenever the application is executed. So all that does. And then I'm gonna go frame.set default close operation. And if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer anything that you guys send to me. And then all this is gonna do is close the window if the user of the application hits close. Just handles that for us. Then we need to create a connection to our database to pull in all that information that you saw. And I'm gonna set it for null. Always like to give everything a default value. Now, because whenever you try to access a database, numerous different problems can occur. I'm gonna put everything inside of a try block, which is gonna catch any of those errors or exceptions. Then I need to go class for name. I need to get a driver that is going to allow me to talk to my MySQL database. And that's pretty much what this guy does. It translates everything for me. So I send questions to it, automatically figures out what should be done. Then with the connection what we have here, I need to call driver manager. And driver manager is used to handle a set of JDBC drivers, like this driver that's right here. And then we're gonna go get connection. And get connection just establishes a connection to the database. And whenever you're doing this, of course, you need to define the location for the database. And since this is on local host for me and probably for you, I go MySQL forward slash local host. Local host is the part that you'd be changing if you would be trying to get a hold of a different database. And there you are, that's that. And then you need to pass along your user ID and your password. And that would allow you to connect to the database. And then we're gonna query the database. And we do that by creating a statement object. And I'm gonna call it SQL state. And then we're gonna call create statement. And all this is gonna do is return a statement object. Then we're gonna go string select stuff. And we're going to give it exactly the query that we want to send to the database. So in the database, there's a area called first name, last name, state, and birth. And I'm saying that I want to get all of that from the table that is called president. That's all it's saying. It's saying, get me the first name, the last name, the state, and birth from the table called president. That's all we're doing there. Real simple. And our string. Now we're going to go result set rows is equal to SQL state. See, there's SQL state. Same guys right here which is gonna be this statement. And the result set's gonna contain all of the table data that comes back whenever we query the database. So that's just gonna contain all of our answers from our database. And then we created this statement object so that we could use it to execute this method, which says, pass me a query and I will send you back the results of said query. Then we're gonna go object, we're gonna create temporary object array. We're gonna call it temp row. And then what we need to do is just cycle through all of the results that came from this guy. And all of the results are stored in rows, just like you see up here, the result set. So what is this? It's just all the query information that came back. And then we wanna cycle through all of the results of said query. So basically what this says is while there continues to be results, I need to go temp row is equal to new object. We're going to throw everything into my temp object array. And then I'm gonna go rows. And since the very first thing I'm gonna be pulling from these results is a string, which is the first name. And that's where the one comes in. I'm going to put get string. And then the next three things that I'm gonna be pulling are also going to be strings. So save myself some time, just to have to change this to two and change this to three. And then the last thing I'm gonna be pulling in is a date. So I need to change this to get date. And then I need to change this to four, which is gonna be the fourth result of my query. Close that off, and I got all that set up. And you can also, instead of get string and get date, you could also do get int, get float, get double, 
and get boolean, get long, get short. So those are all the different methods that are available. Now that we have all of this information, we need to call our D table model, which is directly tied into the J table. We need to say, hey, we want to add temp row, which is an object array, all of those results to our table. And that's exactly what that does. Now, since everything's in a try block, we're going to have to catch any exceptions that might get thrown. So one of those exceptions is class not found exception. I'm just going to throw E inside of there. And this actually Actually, one that should come in here before this, we'll go catch SQL exception E. And these can throw all kinds of different errors. I'm just going to go E print stack trace just to keep everything simple. So that's just going to print out just your generic error message and throw that right there. Now, inside of my table, if I want to also increase my font size, I went over this before, but what the heck, let's do it again. Just need to go table, which is the name of your J table, set font, and then inside of here, I'm going to go new font, and I'm just going to go serif, font, plain, and I'm going to set the text size to 26. There you are. For the whole J table, that's going to change all the fonts. Now I'm going to go table, dot, set. Now if you're increasing the font size, you best increase the height of all of your cells. We're going to go table, get row, height. So we're going to get the turn size for the row. And I'm going to add 16 to it. And there you are. That's going to increase a row height so that we can accommodate the fact that our fonts are bigger. Now, if we want users to be able to come in here and sort through the data, we just go table, set, auto, create, row, sorter. And that's going to allow them, if set to true, to automatically sort through everything. However, remember, we had to, whenever we created our default table model, this guy right here, get column class, this is going to make sure that everything is sorted properly. Like I said before, everything by default kind of gets sorted as if it's a string. And if it's a number or a date, that just does not work. Now we're going to continue to go through these. What's something else we need? Well, we need to add an option for scrolling our table. So we're going to go J scroll pane. And I'm going to call this scroll pane is equal to new J scroll pane. And then I want to put the table inside of this scrollable component. So now just with that one line of code, I'm able to go in here and throw the whole entire table into the scrollable area. And then I'm going to go frame, add scroll pane. Remember the frame is the window. And I'm going to say that I'm using border layout and I want my table to go into the center of the screen. That's how simple that is. Then I need to create my button that's going to allow me to add additional presidents to the table. So just go J button, add pres is the name I'm going to give it, new J button, and I'm going to put the text inside of it, add president. Then, well, of course, we need to handle if somebody presses the button, we want it to do something, just go add pres, and we want to go add action listener, and we're going to go new action listener, like this. And then we're going to jump directly into it and define exactly what's going to happen. Well, we're going to go public void action performed. This is going to be the method that's going to be called if an action has occurred, meaning if the button's been pressed. We just need to catch action event E. It really isn't going to matter. And what we're going to do inside of it is we're going to define a bunch of strings and the first name. And I'm going to give it a default value of nothing. S last name. I'm going to give it a default value of nothing. S date, and then S date, which is going to hold the birthday. And there you go. Now I'm going to go and get all of the text that is in the text field and assign it to one of these strings that is listed out here. So we're just going to go S first. Name is going to be equal to, if you want to get the text that's in a text field, in our GUI, you just type in whatever the text field's name is and get text. And there you go. Now you're able to get all that. Now I'm going to copy this, save myself some time, paste, paste, paste. And we're going to change this to last name. And this is last. And then this is going to be state. And this is going to be date. Whatever I think I called this birth date. Yes, there you are. That's how we're going to pull all the information out of the text field. And what we need to do is we need to convert this string here that is a date into an SQL date that can be put into the database. To do that, we're going to go simple date format. And we're going to call this guy date formatter. I know that I'm covering a ton of things. But this is pretty much what happens whenever you start to learn Java. You're able to throw things together if you understand how all these different things work. Basically, what I'm going to say is the date that they are going to send you date formatter should be of the form year. And then this is going to be two numbers that are going to represent month. 
and then day. So that's what it's telling the date formatter. This is what you can expect. Well, a whole bunch of errors can occur, so we're going to say that we want to use a try block again. Let's scroll that up. All right, so we're going to go date, birth, date is equal to, we're going to go date formatter, and we're going to parse the string date that was inside of our text field. Then we're going to go SQL birth date is equal to new. We're going to Java SQL dot date. And here we're going to go date birth date. We're going to call the method get time which is going to convert, like I said before, this string version of the date into SQL birth date, which is the SQL version of said date. So that is what was going on there. Anytime you have a try block, you need to catch any potential problems. And we're going to go catch. Since we're going to be parsing something, that means it's going to potentially throw a parse error. And then in this situation, again, we're just going to, I'm going to scroll up here, copy e print stack trace just to keep this simple. And then we're gonna type EX right there. Now that we have our date in the proper format, we need to add it to our database or to our table. So what are we gonna do? Again, we're gonna create an object array. This is pretty much what you're always gonna do. And I'm gonna call it president. Basically, I just have to load everything inside of here now. First name, S last name. These are all strings, so that doesn't matter. And then we're gonna go SQL birth date and make sure that's SQL. And anytime you want to load information into this table, you just have to put it in an object array. That works best. Then, after you have your row of information, you need to call D table model and add row. And you're going to add your president object array to it. And down here, you're going to see a little error inside of Eclipse. The reason why is there needs to be a semicolon there. And then after that, we need to create some other additional components. Mainly, we need to create a J button. And it is going to be remove president is equal to new J button, and it's going to have the name remove president. And then we're going to go remove pres. We're going to go add action listener. Then this is going to handle if somebody clicks on the button. Going to know what to do. And that curly brace. Let's just scroll up here, save himself some time. Public void. This is the exact same thing we're going to use below. So right here, just go public void action performed. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to say D table model remove row. We're going to call the remove row method for this. We're going to go table. We're going to get selected row. And that is going to say whatever row is currently selected, I want you to remove it. And it's just that simple. Come down here, put our semicolon in, which is going to close off that guy. Now we're in the home stretch. We basically just need to come in here and define all of our labels. So equal to new. J label. These are going to be all of our labels for our swing GUI interface. I'm just going to change this to the last name, state, birth date, state, birth date. Now we're going to create our text fields and we're going to also define for our text fields the size that they should be. And I'm going to put 15 inside of there for that. One, two. So there's going to be four of those to go with each one of the labels. Last, this is going to be state. And this one here is going to be birth date. Keep this at 15. Keep this at 15, which changes the two since it is a state. And then we should also tell them what sort of format they should put the date in so that it's correct. Now, of course, I should be setting this up so that I collect different errors and so forth. But as you can see, these tutorials can go really, really long. And I just have to make a decision on what I want to cover. And then I'm going to create a J panel because I want to put all of these different components components inside of a panel and then add it to the frame. If I don't do that, whatever the last item is that I try to put inside of that bordered layout is going to replace all of the other ones. So you have to put everything inside of its own separate panel. Like that, get rid of that problem. Then we just have to put all of our new components that we just created inside of input panel. Basically going to be doing the same thing over and over again. So it's L first name. There's going to be eight of them because you just created eight of them. So there's going to be L. And this is going to be last name. And this is going to be state. And these all come from up here. Well, actually, if you want these to show up right, you should put TF inside of there. You want to put the label and then the text field. First name. Then you're going to go last name for our label. And then this is going to be TF. TF, last name, and then we're going to have a label called L state. This is going to be called TF state. And then for this last one, we're going to go L birth date. And then here we're going to go TF birth date. Pretty simple. And now we're also going to go input panel, add. We're going to add our add president button to this input panel as well. And we're also going to have our remove president button and add that as well. And then we're just going to call that remove because that's what it's called. And then after we add all those different components, we need to go frame dot 
add and we're going to add our input panel all of those things all put together border layout and we're going to put that in the southern position and then two more lines here we're going to go frame we're going to set size for the window that's going to pop up on the screen to 1200 pixels wide by 500 pixels tall and then of course we need to tell the frame or the window to be visible true there you are that's how to do something pretty cool inside of java leave any questions or comments below otherwise till next time